you serious? All I had to do is trap up. I'm Mike Dimas, and this is Pinball Shenanigans. All right, back down in the basement. Another round of touch-ups. I think I am done. Well, I put away all the paint, brushes, all that stuff, paint markers. I've used a little bit of white, some primer, some yellow, some light blue, some dark blue, some black, some thick black, some thin black, some markers, some brushes, four different brushes. And I'm going to give you a quick little tour of the quote unquote finished product in terms of cabinet painting. And the thing about showing you the touch ups is you're only going to notice the flaws. You're not going to notice what looks good. I mean, you, you will maybe compared to what it used to be, but that's what I'm thinking. Like I'm looking at my touch ups. I'm like, Oh, I'm only noticing the flaws, but that could just be me as well. Here, let's take a peek. So the top edge there had some chunks out and, uh, it looks much better now. I'll kind of keep somewhat of a distance so that it's going to be what it looks like, you know, from a reasonable perspective. We're not looking at it from, you know, three inches away here. Uh, I just cleaned a lot of the art with the magic eraser, got rid of the major scuff marks. There wasn't really many touch ups or any that I did on this side, a couple little dings at the very back. And then moving on to the side art. So I'm not trying for perfection, but I am trying to make it look better than it did. And I think I succeeded there. Uh, I did a little bit of yellow on the moon. I guess that's a moon maybe. No, I guess it's just a Williams logo because white water rafting at nighttime, which kind of looks like what they're doing is extra dangerous, but you know, you can see my baby blue. I touched up the lunchbox, some black, some white, some baby blue. Up close, you can notice, but that's fine. I don't mind. From here, doesn't look too bad. I didn't really mess too much around down there. The main objective was the big wear spots and, you know, the trim around the art. So I'm pretty happy with how that turned out. The back same thing I don't know if you remember what it looked like before but that is a lot better I'm actually very pleased the blue matches very well slip around to the other side here I might as well go cabinet since my camera is pointing in that direction again just magic eraser Got some elbow grease didn't think I did any touch-ups on the side it's actually a nice looking side and then again here um, kind of sort of tried the old Henry trick and just use some polka dots because this art is basically just baby blue dots <laughs> it's uh, nowhere near uh, great but it eh, kind of looks better than a big scuff of wood because that was just that whole area was just wood so from this angle Looks a lot better than just wood. Um, again, the trim around the art, I'm really happy with how that turned out. There's another gouge out of this moon too, which I touched up. I didn't color match to perfection. I just grabbed the closest yellow that I had. That's the shenanigander way. Okay, and then the face here, face trim. Looks good. I have cleaned and reinstalled my speaker panel holder. And yeah. That is all I'm doing for paint. I'm actually very happy with how that turned out. All in all, let's try and take the uh, 10,000 foot view here. Nope. Yeah, there we go. That's kind of what it's going to look like if you're standing a little bit away from the machine. Looks good. All right. Next thing on the menu is to um, get these targets installed. Check on my um, toothpicks and glue, cut them off, drill new holes, install switches, solder them up, and see if I wired them up the right way this time. 
All right, so I trimmed off my toothpicks that were filling up these holes. Then I kind of like countersunk the holes, drilled them out a little bit, installed the switches, and they're friggin' rock solid now. Literally, they were not doing crap before, so. The only problem is that my camera's moving around like crazy, one. And two, when I get the Mantis protectors, Oh, I don't think I ever finished my Mantis story. I was telling my little Mantis story. I'll make it long and quick and short. That doesn't even make any sense. $100. Does that make any sense either? Didn't think so. Um, that was with the cheaper shipping option. Actually, it's closer to $94 Canadian, all in landed to my door, as long as I don't have to pay extra duty for two little pieces of metal. Actually, now that I've told the story, I think I've already told that story. Um, but anyway, so my point is that I'm going to have to remove these and reinstall them with the mantis protectors, thereby loosening my screw holes just a smidge. So I didn't really want to wait until they showed up. I just wanted to get this assembled. Now it's time to wire it up properly, hopefully this time, and test them out. All right, these guys are now wired up. I had everything in different places, so I did a complete shuffle with the diode and the wires. So we'll throw in switch test and see if it works now. All right, I was just about to pop in the back glass because we can do that now. And then I remembered that my lift trim right here has a chunk out. Then I also remembered that I had a new old stock piece of lift trim in stock. So, oh, that was freaking sweet. That was on my to-do list. I'll be able to actually cross that off. Shipping this stuff is not cheap because it requires a big box, especially when you're ordering from the States. So, I think I even have one more left, which I know I'm going to need for my Adams Family. So that is a lucky find. I'm going to install the lift trim, and then we'll go into switch test. All right, we're in switch test. Isn't that looking nice? Got the color DMD and speaker panel, back glass. There's the new trim. Clean that up a little bit too. But yeah, everything is just so much more crispy and nice now. Um, I do have an orange flasher dome coming. Shout out to Anthony Stiebel, who um, reached out to me and said he might have one. And we ended up doing, uh, which was actually pretty fun. He was looking for promotional plastics. And if you haven't seen, I am also into promo plastics. And um, we basically were like, he was showing me his extras and I was showing him my extras. So we're like wheeling and dealing. No, I don't need that one. Oh, I already got that one. Oh, I'll take this. Okay, how about we trade that for that? And uh, we ended up doing a promotional plastic trade off. So it was actually pretty fun. I got some cool ones coming. He's got some cool ones coming. I shipped his today. He shipped mine yesterday, but in that lot of promo plastics is my orange flasher dome the last one and then those guys they look good i really do like the orange okay are we in switch test for reals okay let's really just hope that i didn't screw it up this time can you see everything okay here we go oh the first first time i hit it and press it hard enough Light right lock, light left lock. All right, so wheat. That means we can go back to play testing now that we know that um, those are working. And in the last play test, I couldn't start a mode, and it was because I just forgot to connect this switch. So that was the issue. Look at that. We're good now. And that flasher, I forgot to connect. So at some point I should test all the flashers too, but we might have to go back to one more um, playtest video and see uh, if 
we can lock balls and start modes now so i might just do that all right let's do a play test video um i do have my hvac guy calling any minute between 2 and 5 p.m so hopefully he doesn't call in the middle of this but oh well let's give it heck color dmd locking balls starting modes should all happen right now I am really like three feet back from the machine, so my visibility is screwed, my stance is screwed. Don't expect anything out of me. I don't like that feed off that uh, left orbit shot. It kind of, a little clunky on its way back down. Might have to bend that gate out a smidge. Holy. Everything is definitely very uh, fast with fresh everything, especially the flippers. Ooh, might have to make my left slingshot a little more sensitive. See that clunky feed there? I don't like that. Yeah, I'd have to take off the uh, whole insanity falls. Whoa, the left boulder. I feel like my upper flipper end of stroke switch is garbage too. It's not very snappy. I'll have to test that out. That feed is nice. Try and lock a ball here. These uh, new flipper rubbers are nice and grippy, that's for sure. Here we go. Love that animation. This is the first ball of the first real game of functionality. Gotta like it. Sort of. Some dialing in to do. Yeah, I, I'm not loving that. Upper flipper. That's gotta go on the list. Oh, coming back. Okay, so upper flipper, left orbit. What mode are we on? Oh, extra ball mode. Yeah, that's just... Upper flipper just does not feel like it's got the power I want it to have. Should we go for the deadly extra ball shot? The target that's five inches away from the flipper? Let's do it. Whoa! Had some spin on there. Okay, I'm going back to locking balls. Okay, number two. Uh, number two. Oh, a new issue. The opto must not be registering for the second ball, or the ball's not settled in there. Let me look. Okay, hold on. Okay, yeah, so locking the second ball seemed to um, not register. Let's see if we can go into active switch tests here. Switch levels. Uh, what is going on here? Okay, so the whirlpool popper, whirlpool. Hmm. Okay, anyway, we were getting somewhere, but. I you know obviously have to uh, mess around with a few things already now. Upper flipper, left orbit, and uh, the switch issue. So, got me some stuff to figure out. I'll be back. All right, troubleshooting series take place or commence. Here we go. I think I'm onto something here. Check this out. I throw a ball into the lock. That's switch 65. What happened there? Oh, the ball's like resting. Do you see that? The ball kind of resting on the edge there. There we go. Well, that screwed up my whole test. Anyway, let's um, go to the last ball. The last ball is 65. Is that right? Oh man, I gotta do this all over again. Okay, let's try this again. I'll make sure I throw the ball in there pretty good. Okay, number 63, number 65, number 64. Okay, see that order? 60, whoa, almost falling. 
63 should be the first one, 64 should be the second one, 65 should be the third one. So that makes me think um, these two optos are um, backwards. So I think I'm on to something. I'll uh, keep you posted. All right, I removed the whole mech and um, I determined these guys are the transmitters. The other guys I think are the receivers. Um, I looked at them, the, the uh, transmitter, the optos through my camera lens and saw that the guy, the white guys were uh, illuminated. So I figured they'd be doing some transmitting. And I also figured that a receiver is a receiver, right? It doesn't really, probably has a designation, have a designation. So I just switched the two transmitter optos. I think that should sort that out. Um, I'll throw it in switch test and find out. Uh, I did also notice a couple other things that I gotta put on my to-do list where I put that cliffy on the um, upper play field and where it meets the ramp. I don't know if we can even see it right now, but the ball did get stuck there. And also, where is it? The ramp screw is working itself out already. Um, can't really get a good view right now, but eh, yeah, I'll show you after. Already compiling a to-do list, but that is just part of the process. All right, doing a little pit stop. My furnace guy did call me and uh, just coming from over there, making a pit stop over at Ray's because he brought his machine home that we haven't really played and it is Zing Shadow. But yeah, I come to pick up my part. 0.93 pin removal tool. Oh yeah. And how much did it cost? The shadow knows. All right, I got Ray. Uh, this doesn't seem Mr. Cameraman. My vision. Uh, it's probably your finger is actually in the way. There we go. There we go. There we go. All right. Okay. So, playing our game of shadow here. I've got one more mode to complete. Punish the guilty. I've got all the other things done. The uh, Con multi ball, shadow multi ball, conquer the battlefield. So one more mode, and then the final battle awaits. Oh, see if I can uh, not screw this up. Okay, what's the best way to get over there? Why did you do that? <laughs> okay, I got an extra ball. I got an extra ball, but that was epic flail failure. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, um, plus I was on double danger there, I think, so I was a little uh, little scared. Okay, here we go. I could try and crack a bill if I get the skill shot. I guess if I want to crack a billion, I do. Uh oh. Uh oh. It's a good drop catch. Okay, here we go. Yes! Last scene. I just gotta survive this mode. do is trap up no I screwed up again <laughs> son of a oh wait I'm continuing for one extra credit oh yeah cheater. I'm cheating I'm cheating all right <laughs> fine oh I can't well here's the consolation prize anyway hey I got two free credits yay all right, back from Ray's little excursion there. I, um, oh yeah, sucked at that effing final battle. Oh my God, even Ray's like, are you sure you want me to record? And you're just like, you're gonna jinx yourself like on your Transformers. I'm like, ah, well, it's kind of half the fun, but I didn't want to blow it, but I did. Okay, so it's not true about the transmitter optos being the only ones you have to change. I tried it, it didn't work. Then I changed the black optos, which I'm assuming are the receiver optos, swapped them, and I think we're now good. So this should be, let me double check. Should be, should be seeing 63, four, and five in that order. 
There's 63. Oh, that is annoying. Look, the ball is stuck there again. Why is it doing that? And in order to like access that, um, I need to remove friggin' a lot. But it's never done that during gameplay. Well, I haven't played much gameplay yet. Let me see. there. So sixty-four. Eh? 65. Optos are now wired correctly. But the ball is getting stuck in that spot that you just saw. Also, maybe I can show you now. Here. Right. Can you see right there? That screw is coming loose. And the transition between the metal cliffy there and the ramp there, I saw the ball get stuck right on that little crack between the two. Um, I, I don't even see a spot for it to rest there, but it did. Uh, so I am going to have to address all that crap, take a bunch of crap apart. When a ball is coming around here, whipping around here, what is making it? do that weird bounce. I don't know if it's clipping this rubber or if it's hitting something or just, it's just not feeding out nicely. So I'm going to look into these things and uh, I checked the end of stroke switch on the upper flipper, adjusted it a smidge, cleaned it again. We'll see how that goes. But uh, yep, going to keep plucking away till I get everything the way I like it. All right, here we go with the removal of stuff. Mold, the the molders, the boulders slash mountains have come off. This plastic's come off. The spacer, two ramp screws, two more ramp screws, the two screws for the um, fire form. I've removed everything so I could access this area. So my transition is friggin' smooth. I think the problem was. The ramp screw that was over on that side, the far side, was also coming up a little bit. And I think the ball might have got kind of stuck there somehow, some way. But I didn't really do a very good job of filling those holes before putting the screws in. That's what it boils down to. Next time, make sure you fill in your wood stripped holes before you just throw in screws haphazardly. So I am going to try and fill in those stripped wood holes before I uh, reinstall the wood screws. Hopefully that will solve the ball getting stuck there. And maybe while I sort of have things somewhat apart, there's no way I'm going to be able to access that area. That's where the other stuck zone is. I'm going to figure out why that was getting stuck there and also address that while I'm in here. Okay, I'm going to catch this on film and then play it back in slow motion for my own satisfaction. So give me a few tries here. There, two tries. Did you see that? I'm going to do it again just for fun. That one's okay. Missed. Oh, isn't that just nasty? Like, ugh, I got to fix that. Okay, so just kind of plugging away at the miscellaneous different things and um, this left orbit return, this disaster drop enters here, flies down this ramp, comes down, sometimes it hits the play field, bounces up, and I think it's hitting the top or the bottom of this ramp here, causing it to be a horrible, gross, unsatisfying orbit feed. See if I can catch it in the actual... Oh, hold on. I should almost set up the tripod just for fun, but... I'm going to try and... with my hand... Oh my god! Okay, this is very much failing. I threw the ball into the target, it jumped up onto Insanity Falls and then got stuck there. Okay, hold on. Let's do this a different way. Oh, and I forgot to mention the other thing. Um, this 
This is the original switch that wasn't working as being intermittent. Like I did this a thousand times a minute ago and it wasn't working and now it is so I'm not sure what that is. The diode seems to be on there good. The wiring seems to be on there good. Oh, you can't see crap. Sorry, but I have to keep my eye on that. I'm going to write that one down on my list. All right, condensing my to order and to do list over to this page. It's getting <laughs> smaller. Got to keep on plugging away till it's uh, there's nothing left on the list. Okay, removed a bunch more crap to get better access. Good news is is that those ramp screws are in there pretty good. I don't know how long they'll last. I added toothpicks and glue. Bad news is this. The ball is still getting stuck there. Check this out. Right there. Um, I don't know if that's because the cliffy adds a little height, but you know, I can wiggle the machine pretty good and it just kind of sits there unless you really crank it. So I have actually tried to loosen that screw and move this guide back a bit so it's more in line with the plastic ramp, but that didn't help. So I'm not really sure, but um, like I said, the last 10% is going to take just as long as the first 90%, especially at this rate. Okay, after messing with this for at least half an hour, I think I got it to the point where I'm happy. It like kind of wants to rest in there. It will if you're very, very delicate. But I had to bend this guide. I moved the whole cliffy forward and moved the whole cliffy backwards. I tightened the ramp screws. I changed the pitch of the machine. But I mean, it'll still stick in there. But at least a little bit of a jostle <laughs> in theory should get it out but what a pain in the ass all right starting to reassemble stuff i uh, think i'm gonna hopefully be satisfied with that but uh figure before i get too far i might as well beef up these ramp screw holes as well with some toothpicks and wood glue then i'll put it all back together again still I swear the ball got stuck right there a couple times, right? Well, I'm not really sure why I tried to replicate it. I wasn't able to. I tried to manipulate that screw a little bit. I can access that, kind of. The other one, not so much. So I'm not sure to what extent that spot is going to be an issue. Um, was that before I raised the back legs or after? So there's that to consider. Um... No idea what I'm going to do about the left orbit yet. Uh, still not sure about the upper flipper. Maybe replace the end of stroke switch. Maybe replace the coil. And also, I'm uh, pretty much uh, sure that that opto board is um, basically I have like two right side opto boards, and that one is in the wrong spot. And I noticed when I put the play field down that it like almost I think it actually touches the opto board the apron so I'm gonna probably order the correct uh, opto board this is the wrong side it's supposed to be mounted on the other side and there's screws for that so someone just had an extra right side and put it on the left side and kind of made it work but I'm not really thrilled about it so there's that anyway uh, I've puttered around enough for the night, kind of running out of steam here. Again, it's the final 10% that takes as long as the first 90%. And, uh, yeah, it's not quite always as fun as the first 90%, but I want it working perfectly, so as perfectly as I can get it anyways. That's where the, uh, the fine-tuning comes to play. Anyway, that's it for this one. Getting there. We'll see you on the next one.